Amen. Good morning. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, God, Creator, Holy Spirit, Son, we ask you not to fill this room, but we ask you to make us aware of how you have already filled this room. Make us aware of your presence. May we pay attention to your movement in our lives. And even in this space, in this hour, lead and guide. God, we thank you for who you are, who you've been, and who you're going to be in and through our lives. Speak, Spirit, to your people. And may you be glorified today. In the name of your Son, amen and amen. Amen. I was, this is the second time that I've been in this space. I think maybe 15 years ago or so, I was here when John Dominique Crossan gave uh, us talk on the historical Jesus. And uh, I was just blown away by the majesty of this space. And so once again, I'm just grateful for the invitation for Pastor Ben uh, to be before you this morning and to share the word with brothers and sisters in beloved community. And so let us begin the work. As we all know, that liturgy, worship, literally means the work of the people. So let's get the work this morning. Amen. And so I want to jump right into this. Um, Mark 1, verses 9 through 13. Uh, thank you uh, for the reading of that passage. Uh, and I want to kind of read it again, if that's okay. And so I must apologize in advance. I come from the Pentecostal tradition. All right, so I, I don't apologize for what's going to come for the next 10 or 15 minutes. All right, we'll see what happens. Okay? Amen. So, spirit move. And so I just want to read the passage again, if that's okay with you, because something else may come up, uh, and my sermon might actually get redirected as I read the passage again. We'll see. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by or tested by Satan, the adversary, the prosecutorial attorney. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. Weighed in the water. Weighed in the water, children. Weighed in the water, gods are going to trouble the water. Beloved community, I was made aware that for this Black History Month that you have been focusing in on the themes of total praise. Black music and the black church. Once I was informed of the theme by Pastor Ben, this passage in Mark 1 came to me. This intriguing story from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 13, um, 1 through 13, 9 through 13. 
This passage tells us about Jesus getting baptized, the heavens opening up, and the Spirit descending like a dove. But here's the twist. The Spirit then sends Jesus straight into the wilderness, a tough place where he faces trials and temptations. There's a clear manifestation of what we're going to call unharmony. Or another word, and I should have went with this, but I was thinking quick on my feet, <laughs> dissonance. So I know the title of the message says, The Unharmonious Spirit. I think a more faithful title would be The Dissonant Spirit. So there's a clear manifestation of dissonance in this passage. This dissonance or conflict sets the stage for a strong message and ministry of about the kingdom, the coming kingdom of God. Or some scholars will remind us a more faithful rendering in our present context in 21st century political economy in a geopolitical context, it's probably more faithful to say the coming empire of God. A dissonance we hear echoed in the prophetic and pastoral and mystical sounds of black sacred music. And by dissonance, I'm referring to the dissonance we find in music theory. Any music theorists in the house of the Lord this morning? Dissonance is when two or more tones clash and create a harsh, unpleasant sound. Also, there's the kind of dissonance we find in what Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called maladjustment. To understand this dissonance of the spirit that we see in a passage, we look at Dr. King, who says something about being maladjusted. He meant that in the face of injustice and inequality, we shouldn't just go along with the program. Our next today, our text today aligns with this idea as the spirit forcefully leads Jesus into a challenging place pushing him to confront the wrongs of the world, a world constructed by humans for the exploitation of human bodies to the benefit of the privileged. Being maladjusted doesn't mean rejecting society but challenging unfair norms. It's an invitation to stand against unjust ways and side with the spirit's dissonance, seeking justice and equality. It's a dissonance not born primarily from what you are against, but what you are for, beloved community. This dissonance spirit takes us to the creation of communities that don't quite fit the norm. I think y'all know what that's like here at Myers Park. It gives birth to expressive forms like black gospel music, preaching, and black culture making, challenging the dominant narrative in the soulful melodies. We hear the stories of a people who face struggles born out of a tough history of slavery, but not broken by it. Now here's the thing, these spirituals, this songs like Wade in the Water or Go Down Moses or We Shall Overcome, these are songs that were born out of very real, harsh material conditions. They come from the roots of black gospel and spirituals originating from songs created by enslaved Africans in the Americas. They weren't just colorful tunes. They were anthems of affirmation and resistance, 
As these musical forms evolved over time, they became bridges between sacred and secular, reflecting the diverse experiences of black people. These songs weren't just about the music, they became vessels of hope, community, and cultural identity. They became ways to name the challenges faced by many people in this country. In the spiritual wade in the water, originating from the time of slavery, it encapsulates the dissonance of the spirit. And that's the thing about the spirit, right? See, the dissonant spirit makes a dissonant people who create dissonant music and live in a world and have a living or a way of being in the world that is dissonant with the way the world is constructed. Mm. The lyrics and melody symbolize the journey to freedom. If you think about it, when you look at the lyrics of this song, which we're gonna read the rest of the lyrics at the end here, the lyrics are giving you a glimpse into historical memory. Enslaved Africans looking at their current material conditions and seeing an analog in the children of Israel leaving, taking flight out of Egypt. Wade in the water. God's going to trouble the waters. This particular spiritual becomes a powerful act of resistance, aligning with the dissonance that led Jesus into the wilderness. In the dissonance of the wade and the water, we see the spirit shaping a dissonant people, a community unharmonious with the chains of injustice. This spiritual is a testament to the strength of those who sought liberation, echoing the call for justice through the ages. As we face our own challenges, let's look at this gospel passage a little bit more deeper, a little bit more deeply. The thing that caught my attention, the thing that continues to catch my attention about the spirituals, in particular songs like Wade in the Water, they actually help us see, not only see the world as it is, but also see the world that, that God is slowly making through people yielded to God's movement of the Holy Spirit. The thing that struck me, when you go back and read the passage in the Gospel of Mark, when Jesus is dunked, when he's immersed in the water, we're bap y'all Baptists, so y'all believe in the whole immersion, right? Is, it, it, y'all believe in the whole, the whole body in the water? Okay. Right, so Jesus was Baptist, okay. So Jesus gets dunked, immersed in the water, but notice the thing that's interesting is that when Jesus comes up out of the water, it says that he saw the heavens torn open. He saw the heavens torn open and he saw the spirit entering in. And the thing about Mark's gospel, which is different from the other gospels, is that it's not a very nice kind of interest. Like in Matthew and Luke, it says, and the spirit entered in. But in Mark, it says the spirit toe open, toe open, amen, toe open the heavens and entered into this world. And so when Jesus is baptized and he comes up out of the waters, he sees the spirit disrupting, causing dissonance from his entrance into the world. An illusion. One of the things about the spirituals is that they help Help us remember our ancestors' witness and them giving witness to ancient stories. And so the witness that this particular passage is giving 
is to the story in Genesis when uh, God has instructs Noah to create the ark and he does all that and God floods the world in the story and the sign that uh, a new world was here that the flooding waters had receded was the emergence or the manifestation of a dove. This was to alert sort of as a siren to Noah and his family that a new world had emerged. And so the illusion fast forwarding. So when Jesus is baptized and the spirit disrupts and tears open the heavens, how does the spirit land as a dove? What is happening here? Jesus not only witnesses the disruption or the dissonance of the spirit, he sees the possibility of a new world. And here's the thing. The power to make that happen lands on him. Not only does he see the possibility of a new world disrupting and bringing dissonance in the world, what he would call the kingdom of God, but also the grace and the power and the ability to make it happen. And spirituals give witness to this dissonance. And when we read on down, when he's forced into the wilderness, and it's a very forceful word, it says push or made to go into the wilderness, it literally means shoved. Amen? As those of us who live in our current context, it feels like we're being shoved into an authoritarian moment in this culture. It feels like we're in a challenging and uncomfortable place politically, economically, socially, and culturally uh, in this culture called America. It very much feels like uh, we are in the midst of, it feels like we are in the middle of some kind of dissonance, right? When we focus in on the love of God, when we focus in on the kingdom ministry of Jesus, we feel like we're being shaped and it becomes much more uncomfortable to be in the world as it is, the world that's coming, that is emerging in this fascist and authoritarian moment in which we're in. It feels like we're coming against something. But I must say here, as a prophetic warning to my brothers and sisters, those who are committed to social justice, forgive me, I have to be a prophet right now. The great theologian Frederick Nietzsche said, be careful when wrestling with monsters, lest you become one. So the way forward is not to become like the monsters that cause discomfort and injustice and inequality in our culture, but it is to become a people who are dissonant in the world, who represent a different kind of politics. The politics of Jesus. And this is the part that blessed me is that when the spirit comes, y'all, this is cosmological. Mm. This is cosmic. The spirit is coming to upend the political economy. The, the spirit is coming to upend and to be dissonant in a world constructed by human beings, what the Greeks call cosmos, the human made world. He's not just there. Even when we go back to the Exodus story, the spirit is not just, or even in the Exodus when Yahweh comes and sends Moses and the children of Israel flee, they are not just there. And this is, I have to move into this prophetic vein again. Forgive me. This is the Holy Spirit's fault. So if you get mad, get mad at the Holy Spirit here. Amen. Um, when Israel leaves Egypt, he's not just trying to safeguard their identity as Israelites. 
But he's, uh, he is delivering them, liberating them, not just from them being mistreated as Israelites, but he is delivering them from a political economy that was exploiting their bodies and their labor. He was delivering them from the very real material conditions of slavery. So when the Spirit comes, the Spirit is disrupting, the Spirit is bringing dissonance. And so when we read in Mark, the world is turning upside down through Jesus. And the Spirit is much more, is interested in much more than safeguarding our cherished identities. The Spirit is here to turn political economy upside down. The Spirit is not interested in integrating the 1% in Pharaoh's house. He's not interested in making a more diverse, inclusive Pharaoh's house. He's not interested in, in, in the Pantheon in Rome. He's not interested in, 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 in making a more diverse and inclusive Roman imperial courts. But the Spirit is into tearing open the heavens. Turning the world upside down. 51% of working Americans make less than $38,000 a year. In my city, which we're working on, I had to be careful because I am a politician, so. That's the problem being a politician and a pastor. I right? oh, forget it. 25% poverty rate in my city. I'm not, I don't know what the numbers are here in Charlotte. Right. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, we must be careful because every way of justice or call for social justice, some people conceive of social justice as integrating the 1%. But when we read the Gospels, Jesus, when Jesus' kingdom ministry shows up, the very real material conditions of people's lives are shifted. The feeding of the bread and the fish. When you get a chance to read that passage, that story, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, that was bread and fish, food. And the thing that's interesting is when Jesus performs the sign and the food and the abundance shows up, the first thing that people do is what? They try to grab hold. They grab, they try to grab hold of Jesus and make him king. Political economy. So as we face our own challenges, Let us be ministered by the angels in this world, in this time that we're living in. It says Jesus was drawn to the wilderness where he was ministered to by wild animals and angels, angelic voices. And I want to submit to you that the spirituals are one of those angelic voices in our times. We need songs like this now. We need songs rooted, birthed, and created out of the cauldron of oppression in this moment in which we live in. We don't need sentimentality and saccharine praise. We need dissonant songs rooted in people who were captured by a power, captured by a wisdom, captured by the spirit in such a way that even when they looked at their conditions, they realized that there was a greater power at work in the world. And so that's how they could sing. That's how they could have joy, right? This joy, this joy that I have, the world can't take it away. So let these angels minister to you. Let these songs get into your heart. Because what the world needs right now are a dissonant people who are rooted in listening, who people who have been ministered to by angels. 
As we face our own challenges, let's draw inspiration from songs and spirituals like Wade in the Water. Let his lyrics seep into our souls, raising awareness about ongoing struggles against oppression. The call to wade in the water becomes an invitation to immerse ourselves in the dissonance of justice, confront the waters of inequality, and emerge transformed and empowered. Responding to this call, we become angelic voices in today's wilderness, echoing the dissonant spirit in our worship and activism. Our communities inspired by the dissonant melodies of the past become places of refuge and resistance. Where the call for justice is not just heard, but felt. And as we stand at the crossroads of history, let's be more than passive observers. Let the dissonant spirit guide us to embody the transformational transformative power of justice and equality in the echoes of Wade in the Water. Let's become living history, actively shaping a true harmonious future. Our descendants will face their own challenges. May they look back, not only to our struggles, but to our unwavering commitment to justice and equality. Let's be remembered like the way we're remembering the folk that created and wrote Wade in the Water, like we're remembering the writers of the Gospel of Mark. May we be remembered as ancestors who navigated the dissonant waters, leaving behind a legacy of resilience, transformation, and a harmonious pursuit of justice. <clears throat> in, in conclusion, the dissonance within the Holy Spirit seen in the black spiritual weight in the water reminds us of our collective responsibility. We've explored these, this maladjustment, this creation of dissonant community. And now in the dissonance of weight in the water, we find a call to action and an invitation to becoming living history. May our work, may our witness also become the ground. May it also become angelic voice to descendants who are not here yet. They're going to look back at us and they're going to find, try to find voices and a witness that will minister to them in the future. May the dissonant spirit continue to guide, empower, transform us into agents of change. As we move forward, let our actions resound with the harmonious chords of justice, equality, and love echoing through the corridors of history. Wade in the water. Wade in the water. God's going to trouble the water. See that host all dressed in white. God's are going to trouble the water. The leader looks like the Israelite. God's are going to change or trouble the water. See that band all dressed in red. God's are going to trouble the water. It looks like the band that Moses led. God's going to trouble the water. Look over yonder. What do you see? Possibility. Gods are going to trouble the water. Holy Ghost coming on me. God's going to trouble the water. If you don't believe I've been redeemed, gods are going to trouble the water. Just follow me down to the Jordan stream. God is going to trouble the water. Amen. May God trouble the waters of your life. May God trouble the waters of this community. May the Holy Spirit come upon you in a mighty and powerful way. May you become a dissonant people who have become maladjusted in this city, in this community, that you become a powerful witness of the kingdom of God in this place. Thank you, Myers Parr, for your witness. Thank you for your sacrifice and your, and your giving of your resources and your time and your, your connections and your family. Thank you for giving all to the kingdom of God. But God's got some more troubling to do. Y'all seen the troubling. 
Y'all participated in it. But God says, I'm going to cause a little bit more good trouble and be ready. Keep looking yonder. Keep seeing in your worship, in your singing. May you see the spirit disrupting and landing on you. God's word for God's people.